All right, guys, in today's video, I have a 2012 Kia Optima with a 2.4 GDI engine. Now, this car is coming from an air shop. The code that it, the air shop said that is in the system is P0087, which is fuel rail pressure too low. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to try to diagnose this as best as we can. And we're going to be using the V-Pecker for this one. Now, I have my hotel and I have my Snap-on, but... For this one, I just want to use the V-Pecker to show you guys that it is actually a very good scan tool for the price. And it is PC-based, so you can use this alongside the Handtech. And you guys could have a pretty decent uh, setup for uh, diagnostics. So we're going to go ahead, and we're gonna, I'm going to leave this load. And while it's loading, I'm going to pause you guys. Alright, so it just finished loading, so now we're going to come into area. We're going to go into US. And it already has our VIN up there for us. It has the engine size. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to click on next. And we're going to go on to quick test. Now quick test is going to take and scan every single uh, computer that is available onto the vehicle. So while this is going, I'm going to pause you guys. All right, so it has finished scanning all the modules that are available on this, uh, on this vehicle. So let's just say if we want to go in, we want to check the engine control module. All we have to do is click on the engine control module. And it's going to be connecting to the ECU. Normally it takes a couple seconds. And now it's in. Now we're going to go into trouble codes. We're going to go read the DTCs. And as they said, it has a P0087. But as you can see, it's in history. So what are we going to do? Well, since it has a fuel rail pressure too low, what we're, we can actually do is actually come into data list. We are going to come down into our, look for a fuel rail pressure. Uh, probably down near the bottom. Oh, there it is. So our fuel pressure and our fuel pressure uh, set point value. Now, the this is basically, the fuel pressure is the actual pressure coming out of it. And the fuel pressure set point value is what the computer wants to see. Okay. So right now it says five bar and 84 bar. So we're gonna take and we are gonna start the car. As you can see, it's a very long crank time. Okay. And we stayed at five bar onto our fuel pressure. Now, what is five bar? I have no idea. I'm gonna have to go in and check that because I don't know my conversions. All right, so I did the conversion real quick and uh, five bar is roughly about 72 PSI. And when when I first started the car, it was at uh, 48 bar, which is about uh, 696 PSI. So it's seeing 72, but it wants uh, pretty much 700. And as you can see, my fuel pressure just dropped to five bar. So as you can see, after we let the vehicle run for a little bit, our set point is down to 5 bar, which is 72 PSI, and our pressure is at 72 PSI. Now when that ends up happening, our track engine light turns back on. Now, if we come back, we should be able to see it be active now. But, I could be wrong. So let's go see if it's now active, and fuel rail pressure too low present because don't forget uh, on a gdi engine at idle you want to see roughly about like 70 psi on 700 psi onto kia vehicles and if you see 72 well the system's going to be like uh -uh, i'm not supposed to see that and it's going to say dtc and basically you, your car is going to be very very sluggish and not advance because it's supposed to work on uh, between 700 to like uh, 2000 psi of pressure uh, fuel rail pressure so, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to test the solenoid or the regulator valve onto the high pressure fuel pump to see if it's actuating. And actually before that, I actually did hook up the fuel gauge. And if you guys can see, I'm roughly about like a, a 72 PSI on there. It's fluctuating, but that's normal because of the GDI system. So. Now that that's all done, we're going to go ahead and now we're going to test the valve. So, let's look at the wire down here real quick. So, 
this is our high pressure fuel pump right here and this is our regular control solenoid for the fuel pressure uh, the fuel delivery and then the pump goes and it moves up and down and then it high pressurizes the fuel and the fuel comes out this side as a high pressure so that's basically how it works so now we have to take and we have to check control coming in to our pump and if we have control coming in then our most likely issue is going to be the solenoid but we are going to have to verify that at the same time all right so the way that this system works is that your pcm okay actually controls both the ground and the power coming into the uh, fuel pressure regulatory valve now the way that it does this is by pwm So the way that this uh, works is that you're going to have a constant ground onto your low side and you're going to have a PWM onto your high side. And that's the way that the, the system works. And as soon as it says a DTC, while well, the system right here cancels itself out and there's nothing that, that happens. So you'll have just have your constant uh, low that's going to be on there and you'll have nothing happening onto your high side. So... The next step is to take and verify that we actually have our PWM and we could do this very simply with an LED test light which is what I'm going to do just to simplify things for this one and we're going to also make sure that we have our low that's there constantly and our high that is getting its uh, its, uh, its PWM signal from the PCM. So now the next step is to take and add 12 volts onto the solenoid side and a ground. And the vehicle should stall. And if it does, well, then that's not our issue. The solenoid is not the issue when it's coming from somewhere. The issue is from somewhere else. And if we don't, well, then our pump is the issue. So that's our next step. So here I have a setup onto the GDI pump. And as you can tell over here, I'm set up to my power and my ground. Now what I'm going to do is just take and hold this onto here while you guys listen and you guys are going to be able to see that there's nothing that happens.
So as you can see, nothing happened. Now, in order to repair this, we're gonna have to replace the GDI pump, and then after that, well, we'll take a move retest and see what happens. All right, so now I'm back on the V-Pecker, and I have a new pump installed. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to uh, system selection. Oh, this is not touch screen. We're gonna go engine control. We're gonna connect. I'll move this over here so we can actually see stuff. And we're gonna go with trouble codes. Now we might have a few other trouble codes because uh, I had all the wirings taken off. And circuit one open, which is because it was just unplugged. And now we have fuel uh, system pressure too. Uh, fuel rail system pressure too low is back into history. Now, if you remember before, after we let the vehicle run for a couple minutes, we had a issue with the data list. So we're gonna go look at our. Uh, our rail pressure and our targeted pressure at the same time. Uh, fuel pressure and fuel pressure set point. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna go back and if you see now with the new pump installed, our values are pretty much equal. So Remember, 48 was about 600 and uh, about 700 psi. So we're probably about 500 psi onto this system right now. But just with that, I would consider this to be a fix because now our fuel uh, pressures are actually reading the way they're supposed to. And that that's it for this one, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little diagnostic onto a GDI system onto the high pressure fuel pump system. And if you did, please think about liking, subscribing, and comment. And I will see you guys next time.